Hey up everybody, welcome back to Yorkshire Fab Shop. Today we've got another small job of, not really a client, but another person I know very well. And he's asked me if I can join two pieces of steel together. Yes, straightforward enough. Or so I thought. So he's asked if I can put this component onto here. Now initially I thought, I could probably weld that and that's what he asked for he says can you weld that to there and i thought yeah i can probably do that there's a little bit of weld on this bracket i thought shouldn't be too much of an issue and then i kind of had a bit of a thing last night before i made a start this morning and i kind of come to the conclusion that because of how thick this is in comparison to how thin this is it's probably going to be a bad idea to start trying to weld that to there because it wants to look nice ideally it wants to be tig weld and this is maybe a half mil thick and that is what probably 10 or more so it's 20 times thicker than this is which is not really ideal for trying to weld that to there now i did think about it long and hard and i thought well i could maybe flat that off because there's a bit of a raised face on there that we don't need and i can butt that up nice and tight or i could even machine a small collar so that it fits nicely in there and comes kind of face to face but again i thought with the differences in material thickness obviously this being so thin in comparison to that all that's probably going to happen even if i focus all the heat onto this component all that's going to happen is as soon as i wash across i think it's just going to melt that away and i'm going to be left with that in holes and i'm going to have no options really for joining that to there so i had a bit of a brainwave this morning i thought Something I haven't done for a long time is silver soldering. Now this job kind of lends itself to something like that because silver solder is inherently strong. It's almost as strong as a, a fairly average steel weld, to be honest, depending on what blend of silver solder you've got. So the strategy still maintains that I can machine that off, make that nice and flat, give that a bit of a rub up with some emery, drop that on there, quick dollop of silver solder, jobs are good and stuck permanently. So I think that's what we're going to do today. Give that a clean, give that a quick machine, bit of flux, bit of heat, silver solder, jobs are good done. So rather conveniently, we've got the three jar set up, which is nice. So we can drop this in the three jar, little skim off there, give it a nice finish. And then we'll be ready for giving the other side a little clean up and solder them together. so that's that not bad finish on there now those that don't have a lathe i would struggle to see how you will get by because this is probably the single most useful machine i've put in this workshop just for stuff like this like i would probably have had to file or grind or but i done not generally poor job of that if i didn't have a lathe so they're an absolutely essential piece of kit for the workshop And then obviously you saw a piece of brass there just to prevent some damage to the threads. So as I did mention, I'm just going to give them a quick rub up with some emery. And you can see the finish is not, not bad at all there, but we'll give it a little rub. Nice. So now here. We want bright shiny steel here really if we can. We also want to make sure there's no contamination or anything on there. We'll give, give it a quick rub up. A little bit better. So we can see that now we've got a reasonably close fit on there now. Much better than we had before. Now we want a really tight gap when we're silver soldering because once it gets up to temperature, it wicks round the small spaces 
So if we've got any big gaps, it doesn't tend to fill them. It just tends to flow into the sort of the thinner parts. So we can see that that's nice and tight. Next job is we're going to apply some flux to both faces and then we can obviously put them together, heat it up and then try and drop a bit of silver solder into them. So the flux that we're using today, I've got a bit of tenacity in number five. Now it has thickened up a little bit, it's cold in the garage today <clears throat> and it's thickened up a little bit. I need a touch more water in there but you should be aiming for like quite a thick paste, almost like icing sugar. That is a little bit too thick, that's like icing sugar that's dried. So I need another drop of water in there, but careful not to put too much because you start adding one or two drops and it soon turns into liquid again. So I'm gonna add a little drop into there and then we'll apply them to the faces. There's probably only a gram or two of flux powder in here, but it's, it's made quite a lot, so I didn't need as much as that. That's why I'm doing the one joint. But it's not a problem, I've got plenty. So when you're applying flux to materials and parts, <clears throat> you've got to be quite sparing in the way you put it because wherever there is flux, there will be silver solder. Once it's up to temperature, it'll just run like water and it'll go everywhere that there is flux. So what we don't want to be doing is putting flux around here because we don't want silver solder flowing out of the joint if we can help it. So we can drop those two together now, give them a bit of a, bit of a twist to spread that flux about. Nice even coverage. <clears throat> and then we're gonna heat them up Probably spend a little bit more time heating that up because obviously with how thin that is, we'll soon overheat that before we even get this lump up to temperature. So today, the tool of choice, we've got a little propane torch. Probably a little bit big for this, but it's the smallest one I've got. Or I've got the option of one of the small little handheld gas canister torch job things. And that probably isn't gonna put enough heat into that quick enough. We'll be heating here all day and we'll never get it up to temperature. So we can throw that flame at this first, and then we can be a bit careful about how we heat this tube up. And then obviously we can drop the silver solder in and everything will be hunky-dory, hopefully. So silver solder of choice today, we've got some 55% silver, various other materials in here, but the vast majority of this is silver. And that's gonna ensure we get a really strong joint now, as mentioned, that these have very high tensile strengths when done properly. So what we would expect is this joint to be as strong as if we'd welded it with steel. And given that the material thickness is so thin, and the surface area that we're soldering is, is relatively large in comparison, we should reasonably expect that if that was to break, it would snap off there rather than breaking the joint. So as long as we do a decent joint, we'll be all right. Now, as I said, we're going to be warming this up. So we're going to be looking for a couple of stages of transition between the flux. It'll probably go crispy and hard to start with, and then it'll go sort of slightly runny, more glass-like as it gets hotter. So the flux melting temperature, tenacity is something like 650 degrees off the top of my head. I'd have to check that. Very similar melting temperature to the uh, silver solder, but the tenacity has got a slightly higher melting point than few of the other fluxes so there's easy flows and things like that. This has got a slightly higher melting temperature because it's more suited to steels, obviously that's what we're doing. So as I said we'll somehow mock this up, try and get it somewhere where we can apply some even heat to it, it might stick it in a vise or something, be able to drop that on the top. I just have to keep an eye on making sure that it's sort of bang smack in the middle and then once we think we're up to temperature we can start dipping the silver solder in and see if it wicks round. Right, so pretty happy with the setup now. I've got the camera a little bit further away than I would normally. Uh, so the picture might not be quite as good, but I don't want to ruin it obviously with the heat. So that is pretty good there. I'm quite happy with the setup of that. Like I say, we'll start gently putting some heat in and we'll watch for the flux to start bubble out and change consistency.
So there we've got the solder bubble in out a little bit. It's kind of its first transition. So we watch for that going more glass-like once it heats up. Try and put some heat into the tube as well because I'm conscious that that's getting warm now. So it's changed colour. We're getting a nice temperature there. Again watching for the flux. Trying to heat it all evenly. Right, so it's flux is just starting to go glass like now. So I reckon we're not too far away now. Big test, yep, not quite to temperature, give it another 30 seconds or so. trying to pull the heat around now so that we get a nice even even wick you can see it wicking around that's nice so now that we've got a full and strong joint on there he also asked if we could patch another hole so in the bottom here, we've got, obviously, a small hole that wants filling. Now he's uh, not, unfortunately, prepared as any patches or anything. So what I've gone and done is cut a small disc of steel out, clean that up, same procedure again, clean that up. And I'm going to kind of form that on something first before I fit it onto here. Because, again, as this goes, you need quite tight gaps and fairly even gaps all the way around. Otherwise, you'll get the silver solder wicking to the thinnest areas and it won't necessarily fill sort of the bigger gaps or areas that aren't quite touching. So I'm going to find some material that's similar in size to that. I'm going to form that around it, make a nice little patch, heat it up, stick it on. Happy days. So I've just brought you in for a closer look here. And the surface isn't the best. We should be all right. What there is a lot of is this kind of coppery substance. So these components look like they have been brazed in the past. And it's evident around some of the brackets that there's, there's this bright orange color and kind of in here as well, you can sort of see that we've got some differing metals there. Now there is copper present in the silver solder and that'll be well stuck on there so hopefully that won't be a problem but if we'd have tried to weld that it'd have just cause us all kinds of bother that would have been an absolute nightmare to try and weld because we'd have copper bubbling up we'd have steel mixing in it would just been a disaster so it's probably a good job we went for silver solder given that everything else seems to have been brazed on in the past anyway so i found a nice little bit of aluminium that's about the right size got it clamped in the vise it's not going to take a lot of effort to get this round. For a small hammer, we're just going to beat that round, try and get a nice uniform profile. So that should work nicely. We'll offer it up and see if it fits. And if it does, we'll flux it and get ready to solder. So what I have done differently on this one is I've only put flux on this bit. Put a little bit more than I would otherwise, but I've only put it on there because what I don't want to do is put it on, on this piece as well and then have silver solder sort of flowing into the hole. I just want it to fill around the hole. So I'm going to drop that on just like so. And I can wipe away the excess now because otherwise we'll have silver solder flowing everywhere. We don't want that. I'm going to wipe away the excess quickly, get the heat on. This should be a lot quicker because everything's nice and thin. 
careful that we kind of avoid this area because otherwise we could melt that. I've got any heat tape, I might wrap that around just, just to kind of keep the heat away. But again, with how quickly we're going to heat this, it probably won't be an issue. Put some heat on, get some solder in, and that should stick just nice. Unfortunately that were a little bit messy because you could see that the little patch was sliding and if I'd have clamped it I would have probably not been able to put the heat in where I needed to and as a result the flux has run and it looks a bit of a mess but that's not a big problem because we could see the silver solder flowing underneath the patch so that's really good we know that we're going to have a good strong joint there now we'll have to spend a bit of time cleaning all that off it's not a major problem just a little bit of post cleaning, no big deal. We want to be confident that that is stuck, which I am, and it won't leak. So that's your lot. Happy days. Hopefully you've all found that useful. Slightly different technique to obviously just traditional welding and things like that. Something a little bit different. Hope you've all enjoyed. Hope you've learned something. So from Yorkshire Fab Shop, thanks for watching. See you next time.